people who go to work usually do. They go to work on a daily basis, right? Remember when they had this, was, uh, there was a guy, uh, I remember his whole name, Ripkin, something Ripkin. Tom Ripkin Jr., how do they know who he was? So they made such a, they made such a schwach that they gave him that he showed up to work every day, so many and so many days. And I remember what it was, but there was a, they found the afterwards, there was a postman, a guy who ran, did his regular route. And twice as long, he's been coming to work every single day. And he had dogs that chased him, and he had cold weather, and he had all kinds of things that also could have happened to him. So uh, we as Eden, Baruch Hashem, know the concept of Tmidius, of, of every day. So I want to share with you something that I once told one of the Balabatim by Yosna Shul who lost his job. And unfortunately, uh, over the past couple of years, there's been some difficult times, and this fellow lost his job. So he said, so what do I do now? I'm out of a job, what do I do? So we talked about uh, all the established that he should do, and, and send out his resumes, and uh, he asked me for, I started to network for him, you know, like anybody else would do for, for, for friends. We do that for each other, people that we know, you know, and we started all of that. And that's all he, that's basically all he wanted. So that's when he, when he was finished, and I told him, now, now sit down, now I'll tell you what my take on it is. I said, look, there's no Shaila, you're an Erlich guy, you're from guy, you're a Ben Taira. Yeshiva. And you say to the Rabbi Nishleilam, consciously or subconsciously, that I'd love to learn more, but my job. I'd love to learn more, but my job, right? I'd love to be able to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and go to Kail Dershu to go to a shear. But then I noticed that at 3 o'clock I'm at a Kaychis. This is before 5 hour energy. Now it's not a problem. Yeah. But, so I would love to learn at night, but my job. And the Bansham accepts it. The Bansham accepts it. The problem is, it only is a good time if when you don't have the job, you talk a, did show up and learn. So if you don't have the job and you show up and learn, you've now justified every tainus oinus that you tainted before. I'm talking on this haraya. When I didn't have the oinus, I showed up and I was present and I did what I did. Someone said, you know, when they were talking about putting this together, so someone said, one second, you want the guys to come and learn from place 10 until, until 5.30 or, I said, I don't know. They go to work from 9 to 5. Lamayin af gemina. Right? Territ says, we know that on the work, the Eitzahara, what does he care? You know? So you want to work. But when you sit down by the Gemara, it's an interesting thing. You could do this by work. You could sit in front of the computer for three hours straight and do whatever you have to. I hope so. I mean, the federal government uh, can rely on you, you know? So, but how come when it comes to the Gemara, Territ says, because it's a Dabach Hashiv. The government could call you non essential. <laughs> by us, you guys are essential. They can give you that label, not essential, those are. Okay. But uh, by B'nai Teira, who come and learn, are essential. So we talked about the Tor Aynas. I want to just share with you a story that I heard from a good cousin, a cousin of mine. His name is Ravra Meidelman. Uh, he lived in B'nai Brak. He was born in Brisk. A Brisk Gebeidene. He was born in Brisk. He was very close with the, the Salavechik family. The uh, barrel took him for an aid. On uh, by Rami Shua's chasana, so uh, he was a trustworthy fella. So this is a story that I heard from him himself. He was in my Mayone Hayishu. Is that the hospital in Bnei Brak? What's it called? Mayone Hayishu, Mayone Hayishu. He was in the hospital in Bnei Brak, and he told us this story that he said that, and I don't remember where it was. Whether it was in, in Navar, I think it was in Avardik, either in Avardik or any. I think it was in Avardik. So I don't want to mix it up. But by one of the out, either the out from. One of the altars, Navar de Kelim or, uh, or Slobodka. And um, he was not well. He was very ill, in fact. Very weak, very shach. And uh, Rabbi Fram Edelman said he went to visit him one evening. And they're sitting and they're talking. And um, it was time to go to Myriv. So the altar told him, listen, tell them they shouldn't wait for me for Myriv. I'm not going to make it. I have no kaya. He said that he couldn't move. Couldn't move. Kitza, he says he went to he went back to the to the to, to the to the to the base medrash, and by the time he got there, the altar was there already, and he couldn't believe it. He says he, he told him he's not coming, so he goes over to me after Meiriv and he says, Rebbe, what's going on? You told me five minutes ago that you're not coming. You can't come, and now you showed up. He says, you know what? After I told it to you, 
I thought to myself, why am I not going? Because Oynis, Rachmana Patre, if you're an Oynis and it's not able to, so that Rachmana, the Rabbi Nishalem, the Tachmalei Rachamim, Rachmana Patre. But then I said to myself, you know, you have to, Medaf Kenen Zingen. I'm not, I don't know how to sing, but Medaf Kenen Zingen. So, we zink with us. How do you sing Oynis Rachmana Patre? Do you sing it like this? Oynis. If you're an Oynis, Rachmana Patre. Or do you have to sing it like this? Oynis Rachmana. If the Rabbi Nishalim is made that you're an Oynis, then Patre. And I thought to myself, maybe you have to sing it the second way. And now I was Mesupi. Would the Rabbi Nishalim consider me an Oynis? Would he consider me an Oynis? So, how, do I, how should I know if the Rabbi Nishalim will consider me an Oynis? So, I have to start thinking about, and this, this is, well, let me just finish that. This is the story that he said, and the next day the altar died. The next day he died. Like that. So, you know, I was always thinking, when I, the story always resonated by me, because a lot of times we come to situations in life and we're very quick to pull out the, you know, the very wide brush of oinus. And to say, okay, we're pata, we're pata, we're pata. But this is the Murray the that you have to know. Oynis Rachmanu. Right? So, what's the, how, do you, how, how should we process that? So, you know, the way that I tell my kids, at least, I'm not saying they listen, but this is what I tell them. But that's a different story. Um, I don't like this. Look. Oynis Rachmanu means that the Rebbe wants your Daphne. The Rebbe wants, wants the Daphne. He wants it. Is he willing to give it up because of your Oynis? Not are you willing to give up what you're giving the Rabban Shalom, but is the Rabban Shalom willing to give up on what he, what he wants? Because he wants your davani. So that's how you have to clear oinus. If it was something that you wanted, my kids are, I, I can't. I said, yeah, you can't do this, but could you go to Hershey Park? You know, it was the second, second day Chalamoy, the, the Hershey Park. I said, you, you can't go to davani? And he went to davani. So whatever it was, I just told him, you can't. Could you go to Hershey Park? If you're the same oinus, so, you know, we thought about what to talk about today. So first I was thinking, no, oh, it's to give a shear. What am I going to give a shear on? Everybody's learning something different. It depends, of course, how long this, uh, this uh, schus will last for us. <laughs> so we'll see. So now I thought, okay, you know, uh, Daf Yomi happens to be holding now in a very universal sugyas. Right? We're in, towards the beginning of our Reb Sachim, sugyas of Kiddush and Havdalah, and Mitzvahs Chavilas Chavilas, and Chaviva Mitzvah B'Shaita, and she's using Magdima Le Mitzvahs, and Kiddush B'Mokim Suda, and, you know, it's Mamish Gepakt. So, uh, I think if it's going to last, and uh, if I get another cycle, let's say next Thursday or something like that, then uh, we'll go to that sugya. But, um, I didn't, you know, have the wherewithal to sit down and really go through it. So then I thought like this. I thought that it's so interesting when this, when this, uh, when this 40 call, you get a furlough, shutdown, right? Shutdown, Kylo, I got that thing. I don't know, it doesn't sound so good. Like it's the first one I read it, it was in the memo, it said, shut down the Kylo! You know? So I don't know if shut down Kylo is the exact words I would use for that memo, but okay. Anyway, uh, so it comes Mamish a week after Sukkot. You know that uh, it's Yedua, in the grace of Tzadikim, the parish of Rimenov, that a lot of, some of us who were in the room here had the schuss of being by his cover many, many times in Rimenov. He used to say over this Maisa, and others, other great, other great rabbis, the Stret and his son used to also say over this Maisa, that Maisa Yedua Bechassid Echad, there was a Maisa with a certain Chassid, who they knew, who had a tremendous ava for the mitzvah of sukkah. A tremendous ava. Such an ava that he couldn't rip himself out of the sukkah. He uh, came after sukkahs, and he pushed, couldn't get out, you know? Couldn't get out. They told him, it's already Shabbos Bereshis. Couldn't get out, you know? Finally, it started to snow, you know, in Poland, it's cold. In the winter, we were there this year in the Ukraine, during the winter in February, Sagan's cold, let me tell you. And finally, he left the sukkah. And it bothered him the whole, the whole, uh, it bothered him the Gefarlech. The next sukkah, he took on a Kabbalah that he's not leaving the sukkah come blank or blank. I don't know how you say it, but I know it's Mishkin Gutazach. So come uh, heck or high water, whatever you say, I don't know. He decides he's not leaving the sukkah. He's not leaving the sukkah. It started to snow. It started to get freezing cold. And he's not leaving the sukkah. 
Ad until what happened. Zog and I say over the Chesidim that came an Anan Hashem, because a cloud came and picked him up and took him to the Medinas, the warm Medinas, and put him there. And that's where he proved And that's why you see today some Sardis Shachsidim. Where do you think they come from? How do you have Sardis Shachsidim? <laughs> that's exactly what happened. Because there was a Rebbe from Poland who got cold in the middle of the winter in the Sukkot and they brought him to Morocco. <laughs> so, you know, it's hard to rip ourselves out from the Yom of Sukkot. The Shiva of Moshe says, the Pasuk says, Shivas Yomim Bashana. So he asks, Shivas Yomim Bashana? Of course it's Shivas Yomim Bashana. Days are components of a year. Why does it have to say Shivas Yomim Bashana? So he says, because the Shivas Yomim have to last the entire Shana. Has to last the entire Shana. So you have to go into the Sukkot to those Shivas Yomim, not for these seven days. I'm here now for what? Because I need it to last me the whole year. But it has to, it's hard to do that. So the Bansham gave us a tremendous chus. The only one kasha, because Shetich Mazak and Schus Ayyde Zakai, so I don't know what Schusim uh, these guys had, that they should be the ones to. But we must be to have that for some schusim. That we have now another week, another Shivas Yomim so far, to contemplate the Inyanim that we took in and that we digested over the Yemei Haratzim, over the Yemei Harachamim, things that we learned and we talked about and that we said to ourselves, Bishas, the Ne'ila, Bishas, whenever, whenever your moment of inspiration was, that I'm, I'm going to remember this moment, this moment I'm going to remember. But then it comes the week after Sukkot, and it's gone. But now we have an opportunity to sit and to solidify all of the things that we've learned and gained and grew over the Yom Tov. So I figured I would share with you maybe some of the thoughts and ideas that came to me over Sukkot. I'm looking around, I don't see anybody here from the shul. <laughs> oh, Greg. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. You look different. I only see you on Shabbos. On Shabbos, you, you have those big day Shabbos. It's a whole different. Not only the gun, the, the whole the whole tzura looks different. The tita he your yidum knows what they eat and shami say this. All right, I don't recognize you on the weekday. Right. <laughs> so um, these are. So I just want to share with you a couple of things that we talked about uh, over the yontif. So obviously, it's one continuous yontif that we went through just now. We say l'david Hashem moini v'yishi right. We start with Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur until it comes into Sukkot, and that all of all of the 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 the, the, the avoda that we put in over Rosh Hashanah, the Aser Simei Tshuva, and Yom Kippur, of course, are to bring us to to bring us to the Sukkah. You know, the the so Asemis always says over that the Chazal tell us that the Eden inside the Midbar, within the confines of the Anani Hakavit, if you were under that protection of the Anani HaKovid, the Yetzirah had no Shlita over you. And we know Yom Kippur, we had Chazal tell us. Yomim Yutzaru Veloi Echad, Rabban Shalom created many days, Veloi Echad, and one day belongs to him. And we dash in that way with an Aleph, Veloi Echad, one day belongs to him, and not to the Yetzirah, that the Satan has no Shlita, as they take Chazal, on, on Yom Kippur. He has no Shlita on Yom Kippur. So the Medrash also says that the same thing was true Inside of the Anani HaKavid. Inside the Anani HaKavid, there was no there was no Shlita and there was no Bechira. There was no Bechira. Bechira was suspended inside of the Anani HaKavid. So Asama says, after Sukkah is a Zechel, Anani HaKavid, the Lechairid has that feature as well, that inside of the Sukkah, there's no Bechira. So whenever I say this over in the shul, so people tell me, and there's no Yetzirah, so people tell me, I don't know where you are, Rabbi, but in my Sukkah last night, we heard such juicy stories. I mean, if it wasn't the Yetzirah himself talking, it looked like my mother-in-law, but I could have sworn it was the Yetzirah. Right? I mean, so, so what's up, shot? So what's up, shot? So I always say, oh, but the same thing. <laughs> it looked like a sukkah, and it, the, 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 you thought it was a sukkah. I was a shkankin sukkah. <laughs> it wasn't a sukkah. A sukkah is not just four walls and a, and a schach, but it's l'shem tzel. And the L'shem tell when you go in, you have to create an atmosphere of protection that's created, right? So everybody always asks, what do you mean? Bechira is the, one of the components of who we are. Schar v'yoynish, everything is based on Bechira. So how could the Svasemis and the other Svarim HaKadoshim say that Bechira is suspended? So Svasemis himself, he asks the question. The Svasemis says, no. The Bech- I'm Bechira not to have Bechira. The highest Madrega of Bechira 
And we always talk about his bat list, you complete his bat list to the Rabbi Nishalim. That's the Bechira. Um, Beicha, right? It's like Lahavdal. You walk into, uh, into a restaurant. There's a restaurant downstairs, no? Okay. So uh, the guy gives you the menu. You could tell him, I don't want the menu. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even want to see the choices. That's my choice. My choice is, I don't, you bring me, tell the waiter, you bring me whatever you want. So Lahavdal, that's what we say. Rabbi Nishalim, we don't want the Bechira. We're willing not to take the Bechira. So, in order to get to that Madrega, if that's what the Sukkah is, and this is just, right, if that's what the Sukkah is, you can't just walk into the Sukkah and say, hi, I'm ready for Sukkahs. It needs, obviously, to get to that Madrega that you're willing to walk into the Sukkah and say, Rabbi Nishalim, I want nothing else but a relationship with you, and therefore I'm leaving my Bechira outside of the Sukkah, it takes an Abayi, then you have to get there, and that's what we use Rosh Hashanah and Aser Simei Tshuva and Yom Kippur to bring, us, to bring us to that point. So, I want to just go back for a moment and share with you very quickly, and I'm going to finish up, uh, just a couple of ideas on, on Rosh Hashanah that I think, you know, bring us a little bit to a better understanding of what Sukkot could be. And like I said, it, it's not too late, because okay, this is the time, this is the Bashana. The Shivas Yomim are over. But the Bashana is just starting now. The application, the practical application of the Inyanim of Sukkis, now that's when they're being, that's when, that's when they're coming to fruition. Now they have to be used. Now you have to put them into motion. And we were given this tremendous matana from the government to spend a week, Pashat, in the oil of Taira. To extend, to extend the Yom Tov of Sukkot, like those to see them try to extend it, but it got cold, and they, but here, Baruch Hashem, Sevarm, and Sedat Se'esim, and Sedat Se'trinkin, and all of the amenities that we need to be able to stay in the Sukkah are here, so it's a Gabal the Matana that we have to take advantage of. So, what's the Avoidah, Rabbi Yisrael, and Rosh Hashanah? You would ask, we just went through Rosh Hashanah, we all went through it, what's the Avoidah? We all understand the Avoidah is Malchus. Malchus. Everything is imru lafani malchias kadesh tam lichudim kadesh tam lichuni aleichem ubema b'shoifah like the ritva says that all of that is going back on the malchias. How do you declare the malchias b'shoifah? Right. So it's one of the things that we struggle with. We as you know, we don't have a malchus. Harai, we don't have a malchus. No, no malchus would let this happen. Right. <laughs> we don't have a malchus. But our Malchus doesn't exist. So then we say, Imru Lufani Malchus Kadesh Tam Lichuni Alechem. What? You try to imagine what's our closest uh, imagination, the Queen of England. So you get fachapt with all the Narishkite that come from the royal family. If that's what you're thinking about, Peshas Rosh Hashanah, you know, you better go to a different checkout counter uh, in the grocery. Because Nish uh, Das in the Malchus that we. So how do, you, how do we, 21st century, people relate to this concept of Kedesh Tam Lichuni Aleichem. And then we think about ourselves, what, Rabbi Yisholem, you need me, Kedesh Tam Lichuni Aleichem, how does that, how does it work, what happens? So I want to share with you uh, something that the Pachad Yitzchak says in his Seif on Rosh Hashanah, that helped us a lot by us in the shul to, 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 to come a little bit to a shtickle understanding of the union of Malchius, and then take it right into Sukkis. Reminds me, Taka, you know, the Putna passed away, I think, in the beginning of Kislev. I think it was Ches Kislev. And Itaka got very sick around this time. So uh, he was in Eretz Yisrael. So the nurse came into him, the Achot came into him in the hospital, and Mamish this, Mamish this week. And she said to him, uh, Noach Lecha, are you comfortable? She said to him, Noach Lecha, are you comfortable? And he said, Nei Nish Noach Lech Lecha. It's a famous line that he said. And a couple of weeks later, Itaka died and he went on his journey. Um, so he says like this. He says, we know that there's a difference between what we call a moishul and a melech. Kil Hashem amlucha, moishul ba'goyim. What's a moishul? So the belt says over from the goyim, and I think it comes from others as well, that the difference between a melech and a moishul, that a melech is midas. When the people go, and with their own free will, with their own choices, they subscribe to become subjects of a melech, then that's Malchus, where it's Shaloi Midas, it's a coup, it's a takeover, it's a, it's a forced dictatorship, that's what we call Moishul. So, you know, very nice, okay, so that's the dictionary. If that's the dictionary, then that's the dictionary. How did he understand it? He explained it like this. He said, 
the aside of a, of a melech is that a melech comes from the same species and the same class as the subjects that he's melech over, the marshal. Umar says, who's the melech shebechayis? The Ari is the melech shebechayis. Who's the melech shebechayis? The Shar is the melech. But if they have a separate melech, the, the behemoth need a melech and the chayyeh needs a melech. Everyone needs their own melech. Yeah, because that's a pshad amalchus. Amalchus said, I come from the same species. Right? So, so the melech, the, the chayyeh needs a melech. That's a chayyeh. But within every species, there's some significant feature that makes this species into whatever species it is. Let's say, what's the chalup between an ari, ari and a shar? What are the different species? One's a chayyeh, one's a melech. They're both four legged. There it is. If I would ask you, you would say that Chaya is ferocious. That's its dominant fisha. It's a Chaya, right? So, so, mainly you need an Ari. So if you'll take up uh, an Ari, was a Nishkin ferocious Ari, he's not a good Melech, because that's, that's the dominant feature of his species. So that's what it, that defines the species, the ferociousness. So mainly has to be also ferocious. Now you come, and you want to know who could be a Melech over the Adam. Who could be a melech over the Adam? So you have to see. What's the yesoid, what's the essence of an Adam? The essence of an Adam is his das. That's what, that's what an Adam is. Chiltin an Adam and every other species is das, is bechira, is choice, is that I make decisions based on the information that I process. So it's das. Das doesn't just mean to have information. But it means to act upon that information. That's what das is. So I have the information, I gather the information, and then I act accordingly. I'm beichelafi, what my das tells me. That's the aside of an adam. So, Mamela, what happens when you take an adam and you strip him of his das and you're moishel over him? You say, I'm the ruler. I'm not asking you. I don't need your das. I don't need your rotsen. I don't need your consent. It's the way I say or the highway. So you just made him Ois Adam. So you made him Ois Adam, so you're an Adam, he's not an Adam. You know what we call that? That's domination. That by definition is domination. You're not being, you're not, you're not being a Melech. You're being a Hamaishal. That's the shot you're dominating. You have a, a, a person and his dog. He's walking his dog, right? right? Or he's a shepherd is walking his, his, going his flock of sheep. If he read Zechayim the shepherd, that he's, this is his melucha, and this is his melech, it's a, it's a sad story. Right? It's a sad story. He's dominating. It's his sheep. He's dominating on them. He has das. They don't have das. But mainly he dominates them. So the aside in every malchus is that the malchus has to be on the same level, the essence, in the essence of what that species is. Now comes a tremendous kasha. How could the Rebbein be a melech over the Adam? The merchak, the difference between us and the behema, right, is much smaller than the difference between the Rebbein Shalom and the Adam. So the Rebbein Shalom for sure is dominating over the Adam. So what do you mean he's a melech? Comes Rosh Hashanah and the Rebbein Shalom says, right, Shanah Hayyim Har Asoylam, you go back to the moment of Bria. This was a dilemma when they created the first Adam, when the Rebbein Shalom created Adam. And that's why he said, Nase Adam Bitsalmenu Kidmuseinu. If I care, the Rosh says, if I'm going to be a Melech over the Adam, then the Adam is going to have to have godly features. He's going to have to be created in the image of God. In fact, his essence is going to have to be Tselem Eloikim. If he's a Tselem Eloikim, so then it's a Gavad Malchus. He's a Chelek of the Kaimi Mal. It's the, it's the most Similar malchus that you have. It's not stam the same species. It's chelik alekai mimal. It's telem alekim. It's mamish the rabbanu shalom alein. Is the adam kamele chayich malchus? Now this becomes our challenge. Our challenge becomes, and it's up to us. Either way, the rabbanu shalom is in charge. Let's get any other uh, notions out of the uh, off the table. The only shaila is, what do you want? Do you want the rabbanu shalom to dominate you? Or do you want him to be the Melech? And it's not up to him, it's up to us. If we behave like Tzalem Elikim, if we, we, we make the essence and we bring out our Chelek Elikim Mal, that's how we live, that's what we do, that's how we describe ourselves, that's how we define ourselves, then we've taken ourselves up on Madrega and we became same species as the Bayri Oilam. 
I don't think you have to say Lahavdal on that. And if you don't live up to that standard, you take yourself down, then you put the Rabbani Shalom into the position of Moshel. That's the Avoidah we said over in Rosh Hashanah. Imru lefane malchus kedeshet hamlichuni aleichem. As the Moshe says, I want to be the Melech, but it's up to you. Ramam Moy says, a person should see the entire world is hanging on him. It is. Should, is the Rabbani Shalom Melech al or not? Everybody else could be a Tzad Malikim, but if you are not, Hashem is Melech, but he's not al Kala Eilam. Big chiluk between al Kala Eilam or not. So, that was some of the Avoidah that we talked about a lot by us in the shul over this past Rosh Hashanah. And like that, you take these Yisaitis with you, and you come into the Yom Tif, you know, once you realize what your obligation of is on Rosh Hashanah, now you can start on a service you made tshuva and start with Tikkunim, and ask yourselves, ask ourselves, was I a Tzalem Alekim or not? Oh, that was missing, was that Tzalem Alekim? So for that, you got to take out the Rebbein Yoyna. You have to look at the Shah Shlishi. I mean, all the, or, okay. The kids are nice. Uh, so that was a little bit of what we shared on, on Rosh Hashanah. Like I said, I'm using this opportunity for us to take advantage of this week as a come out like a week of Chazara on the Yomim Nerayim, and the Yomim Toivim, and the Yomim Toivim, and the Yomim Toivim, that it should be the Shivas Yom in Bashan, and then we go into the Helege Yom Tif of Sukkot. And the Yom Tif of Sukkot Avad is very, very much related to these, especially if we understand the way the Goyen explains in Shir Hashidim in Perek Aleph on Pasuk Dalid, I think it's Pasuk Dalid, that the Goyen says that the Yom Tif of Sukkot, when we talk about Zecher Li Anani HaKavoid, so the Goyen says, Everybody asks the Kasha, the Torah, and the Shulchan Aruch, the Kasha is the Esther Eddy. But he tzi yoysam l'man yedu, there is heaven, kibbe sukkah shachat is me yisrael, but he tzi yoysam yeretz mitzrayim, so sukkah should be in Nisan. When the Anani HaKavid and the sukkah mamish both began as they started their journey, they had the Anani HaKavid and they had the sukkah mamish, so especially the Anani HaKavid we pass in, so the Yantar should be in Nisan. So we have all the different Tirutzim, we want to show that it's not about this, it's not about that, but the Goyen says something different. The Goyen says, the Anani HaKavid that we talk about are not the original Anani HaKavid. Because when the Kali Yisrael did the Chet Egel, they lost the Anani HaKavid. They were gone. A, big, kind of, a lot of talk about that, but that's the way the Goyen understands it. That those Anani HaKavid were gone. And the Zechel Anani HaKavid of the Yom Tov is that the Chazara, when Kali Yisrael did the Tshuva, so here's the Gavadiga connection between Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, Hashem, Salach, Nikid, Varecha. And now the Anani HaKavit Taka came back, it's Zechit to those Anani HaKavit. This is the way the Velt says over the Goyim. At least when I was a kid, this is the way I used to hear it. But you get a little older and you get less trustworthy of people, and at least I do, did, uh, and whatever. And so I went to finally, uh, I just got more time on my hands, and I pulled out the Goyim to take a look. But the Goyim doesn't say it like that. He says, because the Silakash, if that's the case, Sukkah mm-hmm. should be when? What? They have the Yom Kippur. <laughs> they have the Yom Kippur. You're out of Tishrei. We should go right into, right into Sukkot. So the Goyen says no. What happened was like this. Came Yom Kippur. Moshe came down with the Luchashnias. B'yayim chasu nosi. B'yayim simchas liba. You can imagine the simcha that Klal Yisrael had. They got the Luchas, they got the luchas back. Luchashnias, which were in a certain madrega, a higher madrega in the Luchas Rishonis. So Levi says there was no Torah Shabal Peh in the Luchas Rishonis. Everything was written in. Nothing to do with us. It was a finished product. Torah Shabal Peh. Every, every bit that we know, everything that we're learning was written into the Luchas Rishonis. The Luchas Shnias didn't have it. And that's when the creation of Torah Shabal Peh, which gave us a merry a role that we play. If, not, if, Luchas, if you had Luchas Rishonis, I say, we wouldn't be here today. But we never thought to be here for. You had the Luchas Rishonis. Everything was in it. You have a question. You open it up. You take a look. You have to learn. Stop not learning it. Right? But the Luchas, because there's Luchas Shnias, because there's Teir Shabal Peh, that's our creation. That's our Luach Libecha. So, Chayus over Zaycha to that after Yom Kippur was a Merdeka Simcha. The next day, what was Yud Aleph? Zak the Goyen. The next day, Moshe gave the Tzivoy on the Binyan HaMishka. By Yakel Moshe called everybody together, we have to build a Mishka. That's your Aleph. You'd base in, you'd gimel zok the Goyen, that's Baboiker, Baboiker. They brought the Nedavis for two days in a row. They kept on bringing Nedavis. That was you'd base in, you'd gimel. You'd Dalid, 
Erev Sukkis, Moshe appointed Betzalel and got the group together. And Tesvav, they started to build. And Tesvav, the Anani Akovit came back. So they can go in. That's how it's a the thing. Metzoyim Kippur, there were no, there was no Anani Akovit. The Pachad was still there. There was no Anani Akovit. They're waiting. What's going on? There's no Anani Akovit. Only when they started to build the Mishka. Only when they started to build, to build, to create, was the whole system changed. Luchas Rishonis was not our creation. Luchas Shnias is our creation. The first Anani covered were not our creation. Things that we don't create, we don't make a Zeicha for. Things that we create, that are real, that we can make them happen. There's no Zeicha for the money. Like a Mishnah, there's Nishkin Zeicha, there's no brach on it, there's no, right? Because it's a history, it's an ancient history. You put away one in the museum, they put San Senesachas Shalmon, it's a museum. The Anani Akavid is the first Anani Akavid also you could put in a museum. Oh, but the second Anani Akavid, that's our Bria, that's our creation that came when they started to build the Mishkan. And that's the Yomtif of Sukkot that we take everything that we got from Yom Kippur and we build a Mokim for it and we build a protection for it. Let me finish up at 3 o'clock. Um, so these are just some of the Inyanim that we talked about. I'll just briefly share with you just one more. One more Yisoy that I think is, uh, at least for me, it was uh, Yisoy to stick this Yantif. That um, we were trying to understand a little bit the Nyanim of Hashanah Rabba. And I said over in the shul the other day that, um, this is the way I heard it, that some Saifas, Yartzai was Chafhei, no? Sunday, was that Sunday? Yeah. And that some Saifa, on the last year of his life, he told his Talmidim on some Pastayra that Yom Kippur bin Echadurch. I made it through Yom Kippur. Mishan Rabba Vesach Nisht. And Takan Chafhei is Rabek. Because he felt that he didn't have what it took on Hashan Rabba. So it's a big yantif by us, obviously, in the Avoid of Hashan Rabba. So, the Svar Makdoshim and Chazal also already tell us that what's the Hashan Rabba? It's the final Chasima. It's the, the, the marshal that they give is, you know, you have a Shliach. And now you send you, you tell him what the, you give him the gzar din, and then you send him on his way. That's meshiktem arois the kvitel. That's the petek. You send him on the way. And there's the shaymis of chasima b'toicha chasima. So here's the shaila that we raise. We raise a shaila of, and how? What's all these chasimas all about? The rabbi shalom is kula yemes. One chasima, another chasima. This chasima is not enough. Now you need another chasima. What's the avoda? We said like this. That Chazal tell us. That Mitzvah Yom Kippur, the Sultan comes to the Rabbi Nishleilam and he's made on Klau Yisrael that they're okay. Well, the whole time there's a battle, right? Finally, Mitzvah Yom Kippur, the Sultan himself is made. I give up. You're right. The Kedoshim Mitzvah. I have no time to say that. So I was thinking like this. The next day, Sultan wakes up, you know. Nah, I must have been drunk last night. Why did I give that Adis? And he comes running back and he says, Rabbi Shalom, it's not true. I want to clarify my testimony. Okay, so that's what we have it in. But he comes in and he says, I was only made on the Pnimius that it's good. You can't, but they didn't have the Pnim. The whole Avoid was Pnimius. They didn't eat, they didn't drink. They were Pasha like Malachi and Kim. So you want to know, is there Pnimius in the Lafnayu Lafnim? In the Lafnayu Lafnim? Is it Kule Big Day Lavon? Yeah, in the Lafnai Lafnim I'm asking it's Big Day Lavon. But the Bain Shalom, the Chitzainius, the Chitzainius is like anybody else. Look, same two eyes, same two feet, same Tivus, same, they do the same Avoid of the Chitzainius like everybody else. So I take it back. My Adis is only on the Pneumius, not on the Chitzainius. So the Bain Shalom, okay, the Baldzen. Comes a young Tiff of Sukkis, Kule Chitzainius. But the whole avoid is chitzayinus, right? I said to the oilam, you know, Friday, in our neighborhood, Friday is recycle day. So it came Friday, some uh, chitzayinus, right? So you had to put everything up by Wednesday already, okay. Right? In front of my house, I could tell you, there were 60 bottles of beer. There was 15 <laughs> bottles of wine. There was... Uh, Steak bones, you could have think we ate the chase three animals. 
That's the avoida. That's the avoida on Sukkot. With the gasing, with the drinking. We pushed it, we commanded it. The neighbors were saying that it was getting, uh, getting too loud. The other was singing and they were, right? Kul Right? And the guy's collecting the garbage. Let's go to the world. But if he would know how we drank that wine, how'd we drink it? Took the bottle and drank it down. Poured a little bit. Made a bracha. Gave a lechayim. Sang a niggin. Set up shot in the taisvis. Light a niggin. Another lechayim. Uh, Ashba, another Lachayim, Asfas Emes, I hope. I mean, that's what we tried at least to do. So, but still, the Avoid is Chitonius, but it's not Stam Chitonius. Comes with Shana Rabba. When Shum says to himself, No. <laughs> what do you say now? You saw this, you saw this week over here. Kumar Chitonius, but Chitonius that's infused with that Pnimius, Chitonius that has worked the way out of the Lafnayal of Nim into the Heichel, into the Azara, into the Azusnashim, into the Chiel, into the Harabayis, into Yerushalayim. It, it's out. It's out. So the Bunshal, the minute became the Nevi'im Monasakim to take the Arava. What's the Arava? The Arava is Loi Tam the Loi Deach. And I love Mesa Tam, it's a real Musi Yeshiva. So I said, you can imagine, Chaim Besaka was the Rosh Shiva by us. If he would see the Avoida that we did on Sukkot, right? And he wouldn't know it was Sukkot. We did it on a, on a Wednesday. We decided to have a Sukkot to on a Wednesday, Thursday, yeah? He, I could imagine him coming in, a short little man, he would kind of come in, Sot Nishken Tam! It's a Shmek good. It has no Tam, it has no Reach, the way you guys are behaving. But on Sukkot, it's Molay Tam V'Reach. So you take the Arava, and you take it by itself, and you hold it up, and you say, Rabbi Nishleilam, it's an optical illusion. It looks like loy tam v'loyreach. But the avoid that we did with something that's loy tam v'loyreach is ach moloy tam v'reach. There's no such thing as loy tam v'loyreach. And that's why you take it and you clap it ice. Because there's no, it's, it's a masasa mechika, that there's no such thing as loy tam v'loyreach by a yid. Everything that we do has the possibility to be uplifted to a madrega of, and that's the chasim on the chitzonius. So there's a chasim on the pnimius, and then comes Lel Shmini Atzeres, and the Satan says, Rabbi Nishal Eilam, I'm asking on the, on the chitzonius as well. And that's why we can go out of the sukkah and go back inside, taking all that with us. So just a couple of the ideas that we talked about over Yantif, and I want to thank those who asked me to come out, and uh, those who come to this makim to say to the Rabbi Nishal, like we started, that, yeah, I've told you so many times. How could I learn? i got to go to work. i got to be there at 9 o'clock. And, and then when you show them, it's like, hey, this is But now you prove that point. Because when you don't have the Aynis, you'd have to show up, and you're Isaac, and the Rebbeinu Shalom is Taira. And that's chush to be a chush for all our families and for our community. And that we should have to make this to the Shivas Yom in Bashana, that we should take all of the Madregas, each one in their own way. I just shared with you a little bit about what we went through, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, about our journey. Everybody has their own journey that they went through. The idea is to use it in this positive way of building the Shivas Yom in Bashana. Thank you. Thank you.